wind speed of 18 knots and a speed over ground 7, which is at the very, very tip of the middle finger of the Philippines. There's a lighthouse again. Welcome aboard. We are Jude and Richard. We bought a boat, got married, said goodbye to family and friends and went sailing. We hope one day to sail the world, but right now we're exploring the spectacular Med as we build our sailing experience and develop Helios for crossing oceans. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel. It's free and it helps the channel grow. We're grateful to those who support us by joining the Sailing Helios crew. Crew get access to our episodes ad-free and enjoy lots of other exclusive content. To find out more, go to sailinghelios.com. Yeah, the wind uh, is coming in from the east, so it's just a bit gusty and variable as we come around the end here. Got Stefan on the helm, getting some instruction from Jude. So watch where you're going in relation to land, but watch this as well. Left right, left right. When the wind moves you, you then have to look out. It's not like a car where you can still. Yeah, it's not like a car. Sometimes you like turning all the time. So to make it bigger, you go this way. Yep. So this has got um, this has got twin rudders, and both rudders are they're balanced. Um, it's really light on the helm. So you can practically just drive with one finger. Some wheels are really heavy, they're yeah. pulling, and you see them pulling like this. Well, we're not uh, at the Cap Cole. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're heading the Cap Peloponnese. <laughs> yes. The most dangerous part of the world. <laughs> Lovely boats. <laughs> Come on guys, don't worry. I'll look after you. <laughs> so this is why you wear a short skirt? That's the only reason I wear short skirts, honey. <laughs> I might actually... Yeah. Can you put a side on so we don't get our feet wet? <laughs> Until we can offload if you think. Um, sure. Smallest window. Do you remember where we are, honey? We are in Patronus. It sounds like a, a spell from Harry Potter. Patronus. I'm sure it is. Look at this roof. Can you see? Okay. Just a little fixer up. Come on, honey, we can do it. Patronus. It's the Harry Potter spell that turns you into a very relaxed Greek. Goes to the island's last rabbit. Do you want 
give you a tow out to deeper water. That would be very, uh, very good, thank you. How much for the service? Uh, <laughs> you can pay me later. Um, I think I need to get a little bit deeper. In. the hunt for fresh veggies uh, supposedly a fruit and veggie truck is in the village before 11 so let's go see if we can find it it looks hot it sounds hot with all these cicadas but it's not bad at all it's about I think it's about 29 degrees at about 9 in the morning I think it dropped got really cool last night to about 27 doesn't change much here but it is much easier to get these things done in the morning before the sun's too strong. It's quite humid though. There's yeah. no wind. Yeah. It's nice to hear all the insects and birds. Um, four. Did we see some of the bread? No, he moved on. He moved across to the other shop. Ah, okay, we'll try. This place had some kind of bread, but it's like the most nursery bread. Okay, stop. Yeah, it's pretty good. Hopefully you can see this, but just down here somewhere is our anchor buried in the sand and our chain is coming out over here. And um, you can see some marks in the sand where the chain was going out over that way. So you know, we've had 180 degree wind shifts here and so the, the chain is, well the anchor has been reset. So the interesting piece is that the anchor is really resetting within its own length. So it's not being flipped out and then dragging along the bottom and then resetting. Very cool, these spade anchors. We leave Katrinus before it casts a spell over us and head north to the historical town of Githio. It's another hot day. And without being able to swim while we're sailing, I resort to getting wet another way. actually tie it and lock it if possible but also um, somewhere we can climb out we're not climbing up a big wall look uh, 
watercourse also somewhere where there's not rocks so we're going to hit the bottom. There's a nice field. Oh, there's a man. What's his name? Hello. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. He says it's to each other. Where are you going? Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, that ledge. So he wants this as a yes. Well, I'm not sure. If it, oh, there's a rig there. Ah, uh, thank you. The cat is still. Gavinera. We've done it. Thank you. Now the next thing is getting up here with nothing to stand on. Very cute, isn't it? Lovely little town the square. Little bits of old buildings, oldest old. That's a cool here. Oh, I know, right? Hello. The best thing is everything's on the dark. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Stefan left us today, uh, he's taken the ferry which is just over here, um, only ferry we've seen in here in the last uh, three days we've been here, uh, and that'll take him down to an island then he jumps on another ferry to Athens uh, overnight. So it's um, a good ferry service around the island, it's a good ferry service around pretty much everywhere in the Mediterranean actually. Coming from Australia and New Zealand, it's not something that we see, Yeah, you know, we do have ferries, but not the sort of network of ferries that they have here in Europe uh, to get from one place to another. When you can take the dinghy right up to the cafe. Bob's just sitting there watching us. But we better buy a coffee here and that way we can ask the wait staff to keep an eye on the dinghy while we go into town. They're very good at that in Greece, aren't they? Mm. All the restaurants and cafes seem to take some kind of protectorate over the little bit of dock near them. And they run out and they help you, they take your lines, kind of expecting you to come and buy a coffee or a meal with them. Which is fine. They say as you're remembering the good morning, good afternoon, good evening. But Calamera is good evening. I mean, good morning. I'm not very good at my Greek yet. Uh, it's laundry day and we're just uh, walking through the town here uh, looking for the laundromat. Beautiful sunny day and the uh, sea breeze is already starting to pick up so 
Um, as soon as we get this back, yeah, I think it'll probably dry in five minutes. Really hot and sun. We told you we're in Githio. So Githio is the ancient um, I just need to overtake. Have a look. Githio is the ancient war port of Sparta. So Sparta is about 40 kilometres inland from here and there's this beautiful old harbour. Um, it had been destroyed in about the 4th century or something and it was rebuilt and it was still a great harbour. And we are anchored near this tiny island. We saw a wedding on this tiny island because there was a tiny chapel there the other day with a boat where the bride arrived by a boat. Um, on that island it said where Helen and Paris spent the night together before setting off to Troy. So it's quite historical around here and a lovely town. We're doing a little bit of a tour of the town while we wait for our washing to be done. So we've got about an hour and a half, I think. I think we'll find some churches. In fact, I'm sure we'll find churches. Yeah, it looks like another Ooh, look at the view over here. Looks close, doesn't it? It's really hard to distinguish between what's a alleyway to walk down and what's the entrance to somebody's house. So these are the houses we could see from the water that were the last of the inhabited ones. And further up the hill they're all um, in disrepair. And I can see why, because there's no roads that got there. The only way to get up here is in these narrow paths and steps. So I think once cars came about, people needed access to their houses and just abandoned them up there. Bye. I missed it last time. I think they've moved the laundry on us. I was bad or we just walked past it. What are these doors? Okay. We've walked past this pop plant shop, haven't we? Um, but maybe after. Stuck in the dark, found you. I thought you could smell it. I should pull it from earlier. Spot for the dinghy, right at the cafe. So we just left uh, Githia. Um, it's about 2:30 p.m. Um, about 37 degrees. It's hot day. Uh, we've got somewhere between about 17 and 20 knots of uh, sea breeze. Uh, current where we're sitting, we should be able to have a, a, a nice beat across the other side of the Gulf. Time to put the main up? Yeah, we'll put it up very soon. I think we might put it up with a couple of reefs until the start, just to be safe. Uh, roll out maybe second reef on the heading, 
and um, see if we can punch our way into it. Because the moment driving our way into it, that's what we're doing. About four point seven. Four point seven. With eighteen hundred RPM, so it's a bit of hard work. Yeah. Uh, but this breeze will die down, uh, just like any other evening that we've had here. Uh, so by the time we get across, it should be pretty much gone. We're lucky that um, all of our clutches and our winches are back here in the cockpit. But usually when we put up the main, one of us, that is Richard, goes and like, he calls it bounces on the halyard. He like pulls it down for me so that I can then just pull up my hand so I'm not winching the whole way. It's a bit harder, but in these conditions, choppy we're just going to do everything from back here which is fine especially with the two of us um, so we'll just winch it up so what we're going to do is put um, a couple of reefs in first which has just gone up to unzip the, the bag of the main and then he'll come down and we'll pull it up so we're going to let it in the second reef so this is the second reef line here yep. uh, that's our first reef line there we might need to climb that up a little bit um, so can you just start pulling on the main?
trying to pull the line to the boom, you've got two things opposing each other. So, okay, we'll take that thing off. Brilliantly, uh, because it's wound a long way in. But see how it goes. We've got up to 20 knots now, so I think it was a good decision to start with the second reef and see how we go. I don't think we've ever sailed the boat this reef down, and you know maybe it's not necessary, but it is good practice. I don't know what I mean, sort of good practice by rule of thumb, but just good practice us getting in the boat into this state. Um, had a little bit of fun winding the second reef in. Um, the reefing line was getting caught um, at the at the uh, at the gooseneck, uh, so it sort of wound itself around the sail, so it couldn't pull in at the um, at the clue end or the outboard end of the sail properly. So I just had to uh, tidy that up and. You know, it was just wound around the sail and just, just sort of unloop it uh, and then we could pull it through quite easily but that yeah we had a bit of a problem so that's a learning Wind's calmed down a little bit, um, 16 knots at the moment, but we just had 21 oh, three or four minutes ago. Doing about six knots over ground. When the wind builds back up, we'll get up to about seven knots. Should have put Bob on the uh, on the leeward side and towed him from there. He's getting a bit of bounce uh, sitting on the windward side, but he's all right. It's pretty lumpy. Might be the two, what do I call them? Fredo Chinos I had in town, which is a iced, iced cappuccino. And the pastry, which is kind of custard thing. <laughs> Maybe it was that, but it is pretty lumpy. Lunch is made at least, but I just didn't feel like it. I made a pasta and chickpea salad. So the fridge waiting but drinking the water. The vang's are uh, holding up uh, with the pot rivets that I put in. Um, but I think I will drill these ones out uh, tomorrow because they're too small in diameter uh, and put in the ones I've got in the uh, Gethia uh, that you know pretty um, Pretty much right. They could be a little bit bigger, but I think these ones will be fine. Uh, 
Uh, we've just cracked off the wind about oh, another 15 degrees from where we were. Um, I went upwind of our destination for a start, just in case the wind turned a little bit to the left and um, you know, if I just aimed straight at the, our destination, um, you know, we, we could have meant we might have to tack. So I've gone above it, uh, the wind's actually gone a little bit to the right, which has sort of helped us to get above it. Um, and now I can crack off, go a bit faster and spend some of that that I just put in the bank. About another hour to go. Still got 20 knots of breeze. Sea states, yeah, not too bad. It's very lumpy, but you know, it's less than a metre. Um, so it's fine. Hopefully, uh, in behind this headland, uh, we're going to get a bit of respite from uh, these waves. Uh, I'm not sure we'll get out of the wind, um, but uh, hopefully we get out of these waves and find somewhere comfortable to anchor. We've arrived in this little bay and it's... Um, what a difference uh, half a nautical mile makes. Come around the point, um, winds drop from about 17, 18 knots to, what have we got here? Nine, and sea state's completely, completely calm. Um, so that was a good little sail. Um, we're across the other side of the gulf now, and this is sort of setting us up to go around the end of the finger. Uh, this weekend, we just have to wait for some rougher weather to, to, to go probably on Friday. So we've got a couple of days to enjoy this bay. And then we've got, well, you're just going to have to wait. There's another nice place coming up.